There we go. I'll actually back this up a little bit just so our faces are there. There we go. Hello. People will jump in in just a few seconds once they get the notification. No comments yet. Just a second. I should have gotten that. There we go. We got some people in here now. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Curtis Koch. I'm here with Bob Gruba. Uh, we are, of course, from Broadway Limited. Hopefully, you guys can hear us. I tested it earlier, so we should be good to go. We won't have any audio issues, I think, in times past. But we have a great announcement for you guys today. We uh, have teased it on Facebook and on Instagram um, and all across other social media platforms as well. But um, we're happy to bring in the new, or I shouldn't say new, a rerun, I guess you could call it, of Stealth Series uh, DCC Locomotives. Um, this is going to be an official announcement we'll send out to our uh, distributors and dealers uh, tomorrow. Um, but we are here. Hopefully you guys can hear us all okay. And uh, we're going to get into a lot about how we got to this point, um, answer your questions. We got some great questions on Facebook that we'll be sure to uh, get to all of those in just a little bit. Um, but just, Bob, uh, can you kind of get us to this point about how uh, what the Stealth Series is, because I know there are some newer modelers and newer customers of ours who might not have heard about it in the past. Okay. What is it, and um, what does it offer specifically? So Stealth basically means no sounds. Mm -hmm. um, we, years ago, built a Stealth line, and it had no sound system. It had a, a, a motherboard in it that you could put in a decoder. Mm -hmm. Um, back then it was an eight pin NMRA socket and there were a bunch of, uh, decoders you could put in there and it was popular initially, but I think over time, the desire to have sounds in the models outweighed the cost savings and it got, it just frankly got to where we just couldn't sell them anymore. Okay. We, we got down to where we were making maybe like 25 of each in that and then we, we were having to close out those and so, but you know, that was a long time ago and times have changed. Um, now there are a lot more aftermarket sound systems. Um, we are in HO scale putting in a 21 pin connector. Mm -hmm. um, it's the NMRA standard MTC 21. And uh, those, all those extra pins let you do a lot of additional things like, like um, uh, control extra lights, um, control, uh, some, two of those pins go to the speaker. Uh, uh, there's, there are two pins that can be used to bring in a, um, um, a go pack capacitor pack type of thing. Yeah. Um, so you can do a lot more with them. And, uh, along with that capability, we started to notice a couple years ago that people were asking more for us to to offer the locomotives without smoke without sound systems either because they just wanted something less expensive or because they wanted the ability to customize it and put in whatever they were and that was something we learned on the survey too right yeah so um we often get customers asking for stuff but it doesn't necessarily match what they buy right and so it's difficult for us to to gauge if something's going to be successful until we've done it. But we did do a survey a few months ago and, and uh, regarding our sound system and and what people liked and didn't like and and um, you know one of the things that that came up from that is that that they do like the 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 ability or they they, they their customers claim to like to want to buy the models for a little bit lower price and have the ability to update them. So so Based on the feedback from that survey, we're going ahead with this. Yeah, and we're and, offering this in both steam and diesel. So basically it'll be in every product we make as we make it. That doesn't mean we're gonna go back tomorrow and every model we ever made is gonna be available like this. It means that going forward, every announcement will have models with sound, models without sound, 
unless there's a technical reason, like some of the models are just too small. There's no aftermarket Dakota that fits in them, so it doesn't make sense for us to offer it, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think there are that many customers anymore using straight DC and wanting a straight DC model. Um, I, I think it's more that they want to put in a decoder and run it either without sounds and still have DCC. Um, and that's another thing that our survey showed us. And so to make a model with with no circuit board in it at all, where the you know the track power is basically just connected to the motor, I don't think that gets us anywhere. So yeah. on things like, for example, you know, this is a an N scale switcher. It's really, really small. <laughs> um, the one of the smallest aftermarket sound boards is this. This is a, a, a 18 pin ESU. It's just not going to fit. It will not fit. Um, whereas our our sound boards that are made for it. You know they'll they'll fit right in there. They're they're small. Yeah. But um, I I suspect in time some of the aftermarket sound manufacturing companies will come up with smaller boards. And um, th there's one company uh, um, I think they're Austrian. Zemo has a really small decoder that would fit in some of these. But I don't even know how, to the extent to which it's available in the <laughs> yeah. U.S. So it doesn't make sense for us to do that. So. We will, in all likelihood, put this in everything. And um, if it uh, if it won't fit, we just won't offer it in that yeah. particular item. You mentioned um, price point because that was another feedback we got from customers. How much money um, are customers going to be saving? Um, the big obvious difference is steam versus diesel because you have the steam locomotives with some smoke units and stuff like that. How much money are they going to be saving when they... So, the so the um, the manufacturer's suggested retail price for steam engines will be about hundred dollars less. For diesels, it'll be about fifty dollars less. For N scale models, um, it'll be about fifty dollars less uh, because we're not. There's quite a bit of circuitry involved in in controlling a smoke unit and the lights in the in a um, in the locomotive on a on a, a steam engine. And when we take all that stuff out, we save enough to lower the price on the HO by about 100 bucks. On N scale, that a lot of that stuff isn't there, so it's mm -hmm. probably going to be about a 50 dollar price difference. Um, on the N scale models that we offer with smoke, it'll probably be about 70 dollars price difference. So okay. that'll be up in in all the announcements. Um, yeah, of course, they'll be on the announcements of locomotives going forward. Um, we got a lot of people asking us about what locomotives are going to be offered in stealth, just from the first announcement. Um, so I got a list here that I'll go through pretty quickly. Um, the first being uh, the new run of SD40s, which we actually have a couple of examples of shells here, which I'll show in just a little bit. Um, we've got GP35s. Um, some of you might have seen uh, Joe Goddard out at Conway battling the snow and the elements to get the real sounds of those GP35s. Um, so those will be in Stealth Series as well. Um, our brass hybrid HO scale C2, or excuse me, K2 Mikado for Chesapeake and Ohio Mikados, those will be um, offered in stealth as well. The HO scale GP30s are going to be offered in stealth. For N scalers, we're going to start off with the N scale PRR T1 duplex. Uh, we've also got the N scale F3s and F7s um, that'll be offered too. And then uh, steamers wise, again, for N scale, the, the Reading T1s. Um, will be uh, offered in uh, Stealth Series 2. Um, going back to the discussions here with um, with some of the features, because uh, we've talked about this before, about how certain things are going to be taken out. Um, let's go talk about really quickly about the lighting stuff, because there's okay. going to be some lighting features that um, are going to be removed just because of, depending on what uh, aftermarket decoder they use. Right? Not, not necessarily removed. We will put all the same lights in the model, but a lot of people don't realize this. A Broadway Limited soundboard has the ability to control independently about a dozen different lights. Most of the aftermarket um, um, soundboards, um, especially the ones that you, you want to put on a 21-pin connector, they typically have like six. Mm -hmm. Some of them have additional places you can solder another pinpoint um, onto the board. I don't think most of our customers are, a, are, are technically capable 
of soldering <laughs> a wire onto something that's you know that size. I yeah, just don't. About I just, the size of a dime. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think most people can do that without damaging it. So um, what we did instead was um, the like for example the the our diesels. Um, they've still got all the lights in them. The the motherboard in our stealth system, which I think you can see there, is uh, um, it's got all the same connectors. So all those lights are plugged in. And what we did is we made the, the front and rear light directional. And all the other lights are either on, like always on, or they're not connected. Mostly they're, they're always on. So like the cab light in a, a Paragon 4 equipped model, the out of the box, the cab light is uh, um, off when the train's moving and it comes on when the train stops. You can change that to do whatever you want. You can change it to a function button. You can turn it on and off independently. But without the circuitry in the train, there's nothing to do that. So we just leave them on. And then if a customer adds a decoder, depending on which decoder it is, all those lights are brought to that 21 pin connector and they will have to go into the the um, the CVs for that particular connector and define that light, define how it works, whether it's a light that's flashing or always on or on a function key, um, and and that's that's going to be a little bit of um, you know we tend to sell product that's ready to run. So you put it on the track and you don't have to know anything other than it's engine three out of the box. You turn the throttle, it goes, you press the horn button, it goes, you know, the lights kind of do some automatic stuff, um, you know, which is typically directional front and rear lights. And, mm -hmm. and uh, depending on the railroad, maybe the, the ditch lights oscillate when you blow the horn or something like that. Um, sometimes they're always on, but whatever. We, we do that, we tend to do that, uh, set those up road specific. Well, that's not going to be done for these. You know, customers are going to have to um, uh, get to know the CVs available in the 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 um, the soundboard of their choice or the the no sound DCC decoder of their choice, and then they might have to do some finagling to get the lights to work in the way that they want. But either way, I think they're light years ahead of where they would be if we saw a model with. Uh, just wires and they've got to cut them out and solder them because that that really does bring it down to Only a handful of people yeah. in, the, in the hobby are capable of doing that a um, couple of questions coming in on live here um, From Michael will the steam locomotives that have smoke units still have them without BLI sound system. No, they will not um, The reason for that is that in if you take a typical steam engine we put the soundboard and the speaker in the in the um, in the tender and then we have a tether cable which, with a limited number of, of wires in it. There's just a physical limit to how many you can get before they start to bind up and derail and whatever. Or you make them so small that they're fragile and they break. So um, there's, there's a limit. You know, usually it's about eight wires we can run up there. And then you got to figure out what can we do with those eight wires. <laughs> well, what we do with those eight wires is we run electrical pickups on a couple of them. We run the motor on a couple of them. Um, there's a... Uh, uh, a physical sensor in the in the uh, in the locomotive that tells the the uh, sound system when to make its chuff sound, and then the way the smoke and really all the lights run is there's a um, a serial communication line that runs to another circuit board that's up in the locomotive that controls the smoke unit and controls all those lights, and it does it with with by sending the the uh, data stream up there it does it with just two wires so to control okay. you know you, you've got a lot of lights in some of these things we've got a cab we've got um a headlight sometimes we've got an additional mars light uh we've got lit number boards we've got class lights, lights. We've beacons got, yeah, yeah all uh -huh. these all these things and you just can't run that many wires or at least we've never figured out a way to and neither is anyone else um but when you take out that that soundboard now there's nothing to run that smoke control board and so we take out the smoke control board, we take out the, the, um, uh, the smoke unit itself, and we make another little kind of a, just a um, junction board that, and we use all the, the, the available wires to, you know, either turn stuff on and leave it on, or make the headlight, uh, um, the headlight uh, directional 
is is yeah typically what we do and uh um For that reason, it would be really difficult for us to leave the smoke unit as it is inside yeah. the locomotives. But people don't remember, the younger people in the hobby don't remember <laughs> this. There was a time when uh, um, if you wanted smoke, you you stuck in a, um, a most Americans say sooth, the Germans call it soitha, a <laughs> little um, smoke unit that'll run off track power. And, and uh, those are actually pretty decent little smoke units. Yeah. and. And uh, uh, I think they're not as popular anymore because everything comes with factory installed smoke now. Yeah. And so um, people that are are wanting to um, adapt and and uh, modify, it's going to take a little bit of skill. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, some people will be able to do that, and yeah, we're happy to help them. Um, one thing um, I don't think we've mentioned yet, um, but this will make it easier for our customers too is that um, on our HO scale locomotives, not with the SD40s, but going forward, um, we're going to have a, the speaker in there, correct? Yeah, we're a little bit, we're, we're, we're kind of figuring this out yeah. as we go. And initially, um, we were saying we wouldn't put a speaker in because um, we can't control what soundboard somebody's going to put in. It might, might be something that we usually use an 8-ohm speaker. I know years ago, uh, ESU used to use a 50 or 100 ohm speaker, and other people have used 4 ohm speakers and 32 ohms, whatever. Um, I started looking at it, and almost every aftermarket manufacturer now can work with an 8 ohm speaker, which is what we use. So we decided that um, going forward, we will just leave the speakers in these things. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for somebody to install. Now they just have to buy the the uh, you know, yeah. Go, go buy the <laughs> the uh, the uh, sound decoder they want to put in, plug it in, and reconfigure some things. You know, they they don't have to uh, find a speaker that'll fit in the available space. They don't have to mill. You know, and and it, it's it's tricky to get a speaker inside of a a model train, especially the really small ones, and have it sound good. Yeah. Um, um, we spend a lot of time on that, and we buy very good speakers, and uh, we we try to make a good speaker enclosure mm -hmm. that makes them sound a world. Uh, they just sound so much better with the proper enclosure. Yeah, and so we it doesn't mean somebody that is capable might want to mill out. You know, someone who's capable and has a mini mill, yeah. they can mill out a space and and put whatever speaker enclosure they want inside, and and. Yeah. Model away to their heart's content. I'm seeing a couple of questions here still. Um, Jake asks, will we be able to buy smoke units separately to work with other smoke-capable decoders, um, something like ESU? I think you kind of answered that. Um, I'm, I'm not aware that any other decoder has the ability to run our smoke unit. Um, we uh, were working with ESU for a little while to try to do that, and they initially were not uh, able to do that, so I don't know where that 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 may evolve. But at the moment, no, we're not putting smoke units in. If if you want the stuff without our without our system in it, everything that's a part of that system has to go. Yeah. Um, and um, maybe over time, other you know aftermarket manufacturers will offer that, or maybe customers will decide they really like smoke and they want to keep what's in there. I don't I don't know. Uh, Trent is asking, thanks for the questions, by the way. Uh, Trent is asking, will the stock steam locomotive tethers have any unused wire pads that the end user could solder in other lighting or smoke functions that they choose? That depends on the model. Most of them are pretty well used up. Like I said, if it's an 8-pin and we've got track, track, motor, motor, um, uh, that usually leaves four. Um, if it's a decoder that's capable of operating without a physical um, um, chuff sensor, which <coughs> many of them are, they use back EMF, that frees up two of those. So then you've got four wires. Um, you know, you could do a ground and three lights. Well, in the, in the, in the locomotive, if you've got three lights, that seems like a pretty good number. Maybe yeah. you can turn on um, something that's always on. You can connect the, the uh, number boards, marker lights, you know, whatever cab light, and then use another one for the headlight or something like that. 
so you can bundle them together. Okay. Um, uh, we do on our motherboard, we do have solder points. So each each of these connectors, and someone asked, that's a good time to ask answer this question. Somebody asked if these motherboards are compatible with Paragon 2 and Paragon 3. For the most part, yes, you might have to move a wire or two, but we tried to use the same connectors um, largely in the same place so the wires are long enough. Um, and each, um, each connector has a little pad next to it. <coughs> Excuse me. They're, they're small, but somebody who's capable should be able to tack a wire on there as needed um, for various things. Like, like for example, um, for a speaker, if they, if they can't work with the plug that we've got, they, mm -hmm. can, tack, they can tack a wire to, to the oh, board directly. Perfect. Um, I also <coughs> asked you guys on Facebook a couple days ago to submit questions, um, just a little bit of ahead of time, and some of you did. Um, so going back to a couple posts ago, um, let me go to here to, to Timothy, who asked, I read that Paragon 4 introduced Keep Alives to BLI locomotives. Will the Stealth Line locomotives come with the Keep Alives installed, or is that something that only comes with the decoders? So um, the, the Paragon 4 has some pretty big capacitors on the board. They give you about four or five seconds, which means you don't have to buy an aftermarket go pack or keep alive or anything like that. But there is a, um, a place to attach them to the, uh, um, to the motherboard. And uh, I think most HO scale 21 pin um, <coughs> sound boards or, or DCC motor control boards. Most of those have a, an input for that. It's not something that, just, that they just can't go on the track power. You know, they have to go on the circuit board after the the bridge rectifier, so mm -hmm. that it's it's actually controlling uh, or it's actually providing power to the to the the processor in the circuit board. Mm -hmm. um, but those will not come with them, but they can be added later. Um, I think there's a plug for the Broadway Limited. Um, you know, d we try to do everything like this. There's a plug that fits the Broadway Limited Go Pack if you want to uh, uh, install that. Um, if you want to use another brand, you either have to find a plug or tack it to the board with a. When I say tack, I mean solder it to the points that are provided on the board if you are capable of doing that. Okay. Um, I just see, keep seeing a couple more questions about. Um, both on here and that I pulled about what lines are going to be offered. It's Stealth uh, Series locomotives will be with Brass Hybrid and Paragon and uh, Diecast models. Um, and uh, um, yeah, like you were saying with the other with stuff with Paragon 3 too. Um, let me go back to another question that we had here. Um, can the light features be um, already isolated on the board from the factory? So installing your own choice of decoder can make mapping the functions easier that's from chase yes they are already isolated on the board so the boards come with a little um dummy board we call it on the 21 pin connector and that dummy board um uh has some of the uh you can see it has some of the circuitry to to uh keep the lights running and it, it attaches a bunch of them together. Like I mentioned before, the front light and rear light are separate, but s several others like the cab lights and, and stuff like that, those are, are just on a, uh, they're all jumper together to be always on. When you remove the jumper board and you put on a, um, a decoder, um, th that decoder then each of those pins, uh, we followed the MR NMRA standards, so each of those pins then can control the light that's attached to it. Uh, one more question here from Chase. He asked, um, can you leave the power go pack plug on the board like the last run of Paragon 3 and the Paragon 4 boards have? Um, that would be amazing to have the choice to still buy go packs. Say that again? Um, he was asking, can you leave the power go pack plug on the board like the last run of Paragon 3 and the Paragon 4 boards have. Uh, yeah, that is that is on the motherboard. That's, be part yeah, of it. that's yeah. on the motherboard. And we're going to release um, a flyer too. If you're going to be at the Rocky Mountain Train Show, we're going to have flyers um, showing you guys the, the mappings of everything and what's all offered on there too. So um, 
say hi to Ken and I at the train show, and we'll have a bunch of those flyers. We're going to make the official announcement to our uh, dealers, distributors tomorrow, and we're also going to update our website. So if you're catching this late and you want to read more about it, you can go on our website, and it'll have all the information for you there too. Yes, Joseph. The Q2 is part of the stealth line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All models going forward that fit it will get a stealth version uh, as long as the market buys it. You know, I, I, um, we, we probably resisted reintroducing this line because, frankly, people didn't buy them last time or, they, you know, as time went on, people just stopped buying them. So we'll try it again. And if people like them and buy them, we'll continue to make them. We're, we're capitalists. Yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> if, uh, if every run we have to, you know, we're only making a small percentage of the run like this. And if they, if they sell out, we will make more of the run like this. If they don't sell, we'll stop making them. That's yeah, just the way we do things. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Um, um, Matthew asks, are we going to see other locomotives besides the usual renamed Pacifics and Mikados? Right now there's a huge market gap with stuff like SP Pacific, such as 2472 and Mikado's 7.5? I, I don't even know how to answer that. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I look at, at, if you look at our, our website, we come out every year with about six to eight new models all over the board. A anything we think we can sell from, you know, Texas and Pacific uh, um, locomotives. So we make all kinds of stuff. And... Um, like we make New Haven locomotives, we make everything. And it's it's a little bit hard because um, to make a model is a big investment for us. And if we make a model for a road name that doesn't sell, there's no way in heck we're gonna make another one, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. or anytime soon. It just, um, you know, people who complain, oh, why do you always make, you know, Union Pacific and Pensy and, you know, whatever. And it's like, well, look at the sales numbers. <laughs> Union yeah. Pacific sells well. Um, if, if you know, factories have minimum orders of things that are even feasible to make. And, and it's, you know, in a, a, take a diesel, about the smallest number we can make is 100. Well, if there's a, um, you know, 100 people that want this Santa Fe paint scheme, great, you know. But if we only sell 12 of them, we can't continue to make yeah. that particular road name. So, you know, there, there are other road names that aren't as popular. And because they're not as popular, we don't make as much stuff for them. Yeah. Um, you know, um, there are obscure older models, you know, older prototypes that that we're pretty confident that the, the worldwide market for them is, you know, a few hundred pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, they're less popular than Milwaukee Road. They're less popular than Texas and Pacific. We're not going to spend two or $300,000 yeah. on tooling to it make this. It, it just doesn't, doesn't, make, sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense to us. And, and you know, I don't th think a lot of people understand how small this hobby is. Yeah. Um, it's all little companies like us with, you know, 10, 12 employees making stuff. And if we make a mistake on a model, then we lose two or three hundred thousand dollars on it we can't meet payroll yeah. you know um yeah that's that's just the reality of this hobby we don't have that leeway and uh so for that reason um you know we only we only make stuff that we we think we can sell enough to to at least break even on. yeah um matthew to answer your question this new run of sd40s is in stealth yes that's going to be the first locomotive that we um, have in the stealth run that'll be um, coming to you guys shortly. Um, there was a good question. I think Justin was the one who asked it. Um, is there a timeline on when um, DCC ready models will be arriving at distributors um, and what will be the first set of excuse? Well, that's going to be the SD40s like we just mentioned. Yeah, so I'll try to say this again. Um, we tend to announce models sequentially. We usually deliver them within two, three, four months after the announcement. And we're starting tomorrow with our first announcement of items that have stealth, uh, a stealth version of them available. We'll make those along with the sound versions. They'll all be delivered at the same time. Um, from here on into the foreseeable future, every announcement will announce a stealth model unless there's some technical reason like we just can't fit it. 
Um, so um, it's, it's, it's not like I don't want to give anyone the impression that we're going to go back through every model we ever made in the history of the company and you can buy those tomorrow in yeah. stealth. That's not the way this will work. This will work. Um, I, I think if people have been around the hobby for a little while, you know that, that we operate just like everyone else does. We make batches of things. Everything isn't available at all times. We're going to make a batch of SD40s. Some portion of that batch will will have um, uh, stealth versions with without sound systems, and uh, um, they'll be delivered at the same time. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we're about the thirty minute mark in. Um, I think we've answered just about everybody's question. At least that came in. That wasn't a new product idea <laughs> then come in on the comment section um but we will be back uh in the very uh near future uh like i said ken silvestri and i will be at the rocky mountain train show in denver so come say hi to us we'll be happy to see you guys there um we'll have a couple of new product stuff out there uh too for you guys to check out um but thank you guys so much for watching um thank you guys again for your support and your patronage we appreciate it and uh, we will see you guys again uh very soon thank you guys again